Playing Deadlock with a controller. Is it possible? Is it viable? Yes! However, if you tried playing this game with a controller, you probably noticed some things were very wrong with this control scheme. For instance, this control scheme was apparently made with the Steam Deck in mind, because there are a lot of buttons missing from standard controllers, like reloading and crouching. But other things are just bad no matter which controller you're using. Like leveling up your skills requires you to press the options button plus the face buttons. Yikes. This game is early in development, so this video will be outdated very soon. When that day comes, a new version will be in the description or in the top right hand corner or in the pinned comment down below. Of course, developers are prioritizing keyboard and mouse players, but thankfully we can fix most of the problems and play deadlock right now with a controller without too many compromises. This is how it works. First, I will address the elephant in the room. That is, why would I play a PC game without a mouse? Isn't that less precise? And the answer is yes for Xbox players. This game does not have aim assist, but it does have gyro aim support. So if you have a PlayStation or a Switch controller, you can use your wrists to aim with mouse-like precision. In fact, gyro is always active by default in the official configuration, so this is how the game was meant to be played. If you don't know what gyro is, it's basically a motion sensor that allows you to emulate a mouse. This works because mice are also motion control, so translating one motion control to another motion control is naturally easier and more precise than translating to an analog stick. So in this game, we will use the analog sticks to get close to our target and use gyro to do the rest of the tracking, licking, target switching, recoil control, and so on. But if you feel like handicapping yourself, later I will show you how to use gyro only while aiming or how to disable gyro completely. To import my configurations, it's really simple. Go to Steam, Settings, In-Game, and toggle Use Big Picture when using a controller. Now open the game, press the home button on your controller, go to Controller Settings, click on the name of the configuration, and move over to the Community tab. Press the Show All Layouts button. Now search for my configurations. They all have my signatures in it. As you can see, I uploaded different configurations, but they are all very similar, so I will explain all of them right now. The default controller bindings aren't that good, so I will throw most of that away and start from scratch. First, the face buttons act as they do in any other game. South button to jump, west button to reload, and so on. To use your abilities, hold the left bumper and press one of the face buttons. This will clean most of the controller bindings, allowing us to use the right bumper to ping. You can even hold R1 and use the comm wheel. Oh, and remember the upgrading skill situation? Now you can hold select and press one of the face buttons to upgrade your skills. Use L3 to dash and R3 to punch. But wait, what was that? So the developers baked in a very useful feature for gyro players, that being a recenter button. Click R3 and the camera recenters. The thing is, you can't disable that. I hope this video becomes outdated soon because this bug makes it really hard to recommend this game with a controller. And that's not the only bug. Menus are kind of a mess as well. For example, this game has different action sets, which means that depending on the context, the controls will change. So menus won't behave the same way as normal gameplay would, which is good, that's useful. But you can see that there's a spectator action set and that action set just doesn't work. There is nothing in the game that triggers this action set, so when you die, the game uses the menu action set instead, which causes some bugs. For example, you can't spectate other players because there is no button for that in the menu action set, so I just baked in the correct buttons on the menu action set. Now you can change the player you are spectating with the bumpers. Also, when you die, you can't check the scoreboard. Every time you die and you close the shop, you have to close the pause menu. And to upgrade skills, you will need to use the mouse cursor instead of the hotkeys. You might have noticed that I also navigate menus and the shop with gyro. That's because this game doesn't have D-pad support yet. You can use the analog sticks to move the cursor, but they are much slower in comparison. The controller layout may be done, but we can go even further by using some alternative features, like Flickstick. Flickstick allows you to flick the camera in any direction by flicking the analog stick or to sweep smoothly if you put the analog forward first. You will need to rewire your brain a little bit to play like this because you will need to rely on gyro to look up and down, but it's super fun and precise to use. The other thing is trackpads. 
If you're using a Steam Deck or a PlayStation controller, you can use the right trackpad to navigate menus. In normal gameplay, touching the right trackpad will open up the scoreboard so you can upgrade your skills and check the progress of your teammates and opponents. Now for the handicapped options. You can use my configurations with no gyro, no aim assist, no precision, no farms, no kills, no bitches by importing the no gyro version of my configuration. Or you can import the gyro ADS only version. So when you press the zoom button, gyro will be active. Since we are all sweaty gamers here, we all have our preferences. So you will probably want to change the gyro or the analog stick sensitivity. This configuration requires the sensitivity of the game to be at the default value. So instead of changing the mouse sensitivity in game, navigate back to this screen and click on edit layout. Now click on the gear icon beside the setting that you want to configure. Now change whatever setting you want. Just know that the gyro sensitivity slider follows the natural sensitivity scale, which means that you can use the same sensitivity that you're already used to in other games, because this scale refers to the number of 360s you can do in the game with one 360 in real life. So 1 to 1 will translate 1 degree in real life to 1 degree in game, and 1 to 4 will translate 4 degrees in game to 1 in real life. If you didn't understand anything that I just said, Welcome to the channel! Click on the top video to watch the Gyro Beginner's Guide or on the bottom video to watch my in-depth configuration guide to learn all about gyroing. Thanks for watching!